Good morning. Your builder will marry you. Huh. Your builder will marry you. Not sure that we'll see any sunlight directly this morning. Sun, uh, sun disc for almost for certain not. It's really, really dark and heavy. Lots and lots of rain. And you know, the amazing thing is that we have a dry spell right now. <laughs> and we were able to be outdoors again this morning in the midst of this incredible nature. A huge gift from on high for us, our planet, our home, our habitat, where we're given to live, habitat for humanity, for all of creation. Well, all of creation is the whole entire universe, so that's a bit bigger. But here, our planet Earth, we have the water and the air and the earth and now we're just missing the fire. <laughs> and today it's all about marriage. All about marriage. Your maker will marry you. Isn't that an astonishing line from Isaiah? Your maker will marry you. Unbelievable. I'm going to grab my umbrella because I have it here nearby. It's going to start dropping again now. You see, it's right here. There we go. Now we can be outdoors. Just my hand will be a little bit restricted for the zooming part. We've got some incredible thoughts today in the scripture. Your maker will marry you. I mean, it's a big deal when the prince, the crown prince, marries the unknown teacher or servant girl or you know, waitress, or he's traveling on the airplane and she's just there serving a coffee. And he says, will you marry me? The prince, the crown prince. But your builder will marry you. You know, this line of Isaiah today is really a knockout punch. Right smack in our attention. And we should ponder that. Oh, there's our, our uh, familiar, there he goes, we got him just in time. He said, I want my privacy. That was too much to hear, your builder will marry you. So he took off. Just the nerve of Isaiah to write down that line, you know, the inspiration that comes to the sacred writers as the communicate the mind of God to us. Your builder will marry you. You know, and now with modern science, you know, we know a lot more about this builder. They knew a lot. Maybe they understood more, because sometimes you can have a lot of encyclopedic knowledge and maybe not deep knowledge. You could know the names of a thousand things and you might be lacking in love because love gives a deeper knowledge. You could know a lot of stuff about problems in the world, but you might be lacking hope. And then you'd be deprived of a major, major source of reality. And you could know a lot of stuff and not have faith, and then you also wouldn't know fully. 
Here's one of our pastors coming out in his shirt here, ready to get a last look before they leave this morning and continue their pilgrimage. They were with us for three days. Your maker will marry you. The author of the entire cosmos, the entire universe, heaven and earth, angels, archangels, thrones and dominions, the creator, your maker will marry you. Hey guys, we gotta go in there deeply. And of course, if he's the maker, he has no problem walking on the water. He has no problem taking a few loaves and feeding the multitudes because he's the maker. He knows the stuff from inside. Pastor, good morning. Good morning. Do, do you want to say a word to our people? We're on live stream. You, you, I, I don't want you to miss anything, but you're, you're not going to miss the sunrise at least right now. What's that? You're not going to miss the sunrise right now. Yeah, it's, a little, it's, cloudy. it's cloudy. Would you imagine the joy Jesus would have when his people would be receiving the blessing of rain? Amen. Yeah, it's what an incredible place. That this is right here where, where Jesus was and right here on the water. And I was just thinking about uh, the passage where Jesus, Jesus said, even the winds and the sea obey him. And we're, we're right here on the sea and it's really calm right now, but. Well, What's your first name again? Brett Horseman. Brett, where are you from, Pastor uh, Brett? Waukee, Iowa. You, Waukee or walk on? Waukee. There's also walk on Iowa, right? Yes, there is. Yes. I know that place. You yeah. blink and you've gone through it. Yes, that, ours is a little bit different. We're in the suburb of Des Moines. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I know, guys, I knew a family there. I visited out there in uh, 19, what, 1984, five, six, around that time. Okay. It's a yeah. while ago. Yes. Maybe you weren't born yet. Not at that point, 87. <laughs> That's the year of my ordination. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So of those three days you spent here down in Galilee, any word for our people, Pastor Brett? Just Brett, right? Brett. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is, you have expectations of what Israel is and what the Sea of Galilee is, and they're high expectations but it's far better than I can even, you know, I even thought and I can describe. So uh, it's just a special thing. Yeah, the, days, the last couple of days came out here and read my Bible through Matthew and just on the Sea of Galilee and it just doesn't get any better than that. Uh -huh. So this is... You know, it's uh, interesting. You said there, the one who made the, the sky and the, the earth and the sky and the, the water. That's what I'm just talking about right now because we have a, we have, we're celebrating today or remembering the marriage feast of Cana. Sure. But the... Uh, Old Testament passage that's set before that, and this is read all over the church today, it's amazing, all around the world, is Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And the top line there, the peak line of that longer passage is, your builder will marry you. Okay. It's a very powerful language. Yes. Yeah, we were just, uh, um, one of the one of the hill, I think it's Mount Arbel, and they're saying Cana is just right there, and you just put all those things together of, you know, you, you hear about Cana, the marriage of Cana, you hear about the Sea of Galilee, and then realize they're only 15 minute uh, hike in between the, the mountains there. And it's just, it becomes so real when you put all the pieces together. You know, I love when I'm driving through, I seeing the road signs, you know, Nazareth, 20 kilometers. <laughs> it's very real at that point. Yeah. Mount of Beatitudes is on a signpost here, you know, it's, yes. it, it, it makes and it here real. here we are in Magdala. And here we are in Magdala. How did you like your stay here? It was perfect. Groups happy? Yes, uh, uh -huh. couldn't be happier. Uh -huh. uh, this is this is perfect and very special and not just a hotel by the sea. It's a hotel where there's a synagogue there and so and all the different things that it, it's just overwhelming how much there is here. Very very grateful for our stay. I know you're going to leave in a few minutes, so I know you want your own personal moments here, praying for your community, for your family, for yourself, for yes, for the world. So. Thank you, Pastor Brett, for yes. joining us this morning. Thank you for the for doing this and how, how you guys have done it and really appreciate that. So preserving the history of the Bible. Yes.
Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Come back again. Come back Thank with you. your people. Yes. Well, from from Waukee, Waukee, Iowa. Waukee, Iowa. Okay. God bless you, Pastor Brett. Isn't that lovely? That's the gift of the pilgrimage here, how it touches hearts, all of us, you know, uh, all the time, really. Um, it's just such a, such a gift. So, people, your builder will marry you. And is it any wonder then that he could walk on the water? Is it any wonder then when he would just give an instruction uh, nearby, the waters would blush and turn to wine? Because that's what happens to all the water anyway that's falling from this rain across the vineyards all around the region. Up in Lebanon, they have great wines here in Israel, in, uh, in the Palestinian territories. The Crimson wine, I think, for example, we use for, for mass every day. And then we think of uh, in Jordan and all over, you know, and the history of wine. And what's wine? Wine is like 99% water, but he turns it into wine. He turns it in through the plant called the vine. He made the vine. He's the maker of the vine as well. And he's the maker of those who make the wine. He gives them the skills to discover the richness of nature, to put it together, to give it the time to do the process and to discover that gift of wine. A little wine is good for the health. But then he took the wine and it became crimson red, his outpouring of love forever on the cross. Take this chalice and drink from it. This is my blood. And he drank the cup himself to the last drop at Gethsemane. And that whole plan, he who eats my bread, my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever. The whole mystery here is amazing. This mystery of Cana. And he created that first couple. That's how he created mankind. Through him, everything was made. Without the word, nothing was made. And it's spanning through to the eternal celebration of the wedding feast of the Lamb, forever in heaven. My cup flows over. The mysteries of redemption, the mystery of salvation, the love that's expressed, the Creator's purpose with us, It's just off the charts and it's all to reveal his love and then the great gift of the married couples representing that love because that's the language he uses to reveal himself it flowers in Hosea it flowers in the song of songs and it flowers especially in Calvary at the Last Supper before that in Gethsemane. What love. And that's who we are. We are the spouse of our Maker. What God wants from us, what He gives us, it's really for ecstasy. That ecstasy of love. Off the charts. And so today, Cana then is coming, always associated with the birth of Christ, expressing that love. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the baptism, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Renewing our baptism, making our baptism possible. And then the revelation before his disciples, they saw his glory and they believed in him. At a wedding. So this is why also Christ's bride, the church, is so passionate about marriage, about the sanctity of marriage, about the enormous dignity of marriage. And that grace pouring through those couples who are in love, who are united, who are procreators of the new generations that are called to celebrate in the eternal banquet forever.
What a world we're living in. What a planet. What a plan. What a gift forever. People, may you have a very blessed Sunday. Come on, little camera. Do ourselves a moment. Here I have got my little umbrella here. It's not dripping right now, actually. So goodbye. God bless you. Be thankful. Be grateful. Let's live our great calling, each one in their own way, as the second reading gives us today. And let us praise the Lord for his mighty works, his marvelous works.